Yo, welcome back to the channel. So, here's a car park. Although the video title says I bought a car park, I actually didn't buy this car park. I do own a car park, but it's not this one. No parking. There you go. Here's your first thing. <laughs> you can't put no parking on there, mate. This is a public car park for the people that live in these houses and their friends and guests. And also, as you can see, it's open. The gates are there. But they, those gates never shut and never locked. They just open all the time. So you can literally, travellers or anybody who wants to come here can bring the caravans here, park up. And gonna, you're gonna be, they're going to be there for weeks and weeks and weeks before you, the police manage to move them on, unless you're lucky. So, but if you want to buy a car park, right, you're going to need like signs. You need to know what signs you can put up like this, right? You're going to need electric or lighting, maybe. You don't necessarily have to have lighting. You don't necessarily have to have electric, but it is handy. Don't forget all the cars are getting changed now to, um, they're all getting changed to, what's that motorbike up there? They're all getting changed to electric. So if you've got an electric supply in the car park that you buy, but then that's great news. That means that you can literally, oh, that is sweet. Look at that, no number plate old 600 ducati that's nice that like in it yeah um so let's start from the beginning anyway let's start from the beginning plot size you need to you need to know what plot size you're going to need i mean obviously this is each bay space where a car parks should be um about 2.8 meters wide by five meters or 4.8 meters long um realistically i mean you could do 2.4 meters wide by 4.8 meters and have a small space but the cars are getting bigger and bigger aren't they i mean look at this nissan over here it's huge so probably best to go with the wider size and then you need roadways accesses like this to get in and out so that people can reverse the car out without hitting the other car on the other side generally they should be between 5.1 meters and 7 point no, and 5.7 metres in the UK. Um, you have to check on Google, basically, for your country, what the sizes are for the cars, because different cars, different countries have different sized cars, like China. They're probably smaller in China. So, um, they probably have smaller spaces. I don't know, maybe. Right, um, Zoopla. You can go on Zoopla and just type in England into the search right um search from zero pound to like 20 pound 20 000 pound if you can if you can do a search like that so you're on the low end because you're looking for a parking space you can buy a single parking space all the way up to a full car park but if you're just, just looking for a single parking space you might find them for sale on zoopla or right move maybe the other place to look is auctions um auctions is probably the the, the main place you're going to find um, a car park like this that you can buy and rent the spaces out directly you know you can also obviously buy a building that's derelict knock the building down and build a car park on that land um, that's a good idea to do if you can buy the, the piece of land and the building and demolish it and build your car park cheap enough now bear in mind the cost of building and pulling down a building um, and building them um, car parking putting um i don't know block paving down like this or putting tarmac down it's expensive it costs a lot of money believe me um you're looking at for one space one parking space you can pay like two thousand pound to tarmac it it's a deer do right so that's why <laughs> you need to keep on top of your tarmac if you can make sure it's right at the moment in my car park i've got problems with my tarmac in some areas and it's going to cost me about twelve thousand pound just to sort out a small area like like this area here it's about 12 grand it's a lot of money so um the electric supply definitely land with an electric supply is going to be a benefit for the future for charging cars for electric lights for for electric barriers for the entrances and stuff like that so electric is a good good one to have if you can have electric um, make sure you check the government regulations and stuff um, 
on to see what the regulations are you might buy a plot of land like this right perfect for a car park and they say oh no no there's not enough room to have like 30 or 40 extra cars coming in out, in and out of that entrance there and going onto that main road unless we build a roundabout and we've no plans to build, build a roundabout there so or tra put traffic lights there no we're not doing it you can't have it as a car park and they can stop you right so check you check with the government the council the regulations and find out before you do anything you need to check it's a land freehold or is it leasehold i mean i i like freehold but i live in the north of the uk i do my business in the north of the uk anyway um and i would go with, go with freehold all the time freehold properties freehold land freehold houses freehold everything but if you're living in the south or something where things property is a premium you might find that a lot of it's leasehold um, if you buy a car parking space under a development of apartments or something you might find you might find one of them indoor car parking space fifteen thousand pound you buy it you can rent it out to one of the tenants in the building who doesn't own a parking space now that's good news but the you're going to have to pay maintenance you're going to have to pay electric towards the electric for the car park you're going to have to pay for the staff of the car park the cleaning of the car park there's going to be a lot to it so um be be careful make sure you do your mathematics and your figures and work everything out so that you know exactly what you're paying per parking space how wide it is how much you need to pay for maintenance how much you're paying for gardening how much you're paying for for um, electric a service charge for the space from the company that owns the, the, the full leasehold you need to find out all this sort of stuff so be careful before you buy one of them because although you can rent the space out for like I don't know, thirteen hundred pounds, twelve hundred pounds a month for a space indoors with in an indoor car park, you're still gonna have plenty of outgoings. So there you go. Um but leasehold, like I say, it's an option. Look into it. Don't be scared of leasehold. If the figures work out, it doesn't really matter. Um find out how much a space is worth in your area go on you know rent rent my parking space and all that go on the websites and see if you can find out how much the space is to rent and also how much they are to buy um because obviously you need to you need a certain decent yield you know you need to get a decent yield it needs to be at least 10 percent yield that you're getting otherwise you're better off just putting your money in the s p um in my opinion so you can also look into the tarmac prices for how much it is for tarmac repair you need to work out the the, the value of the plot you're buying it's vital to do that um i don't think there'll be any rates to pay in the uk we don't pay rates on car parks we just pay insurance which is about 300 pounds a year for a car park like this sort of size um a gardener to keep the place tidy 100 pounds a month 1200 pound a year um, security you're looking at fences you're looking at barriers metal barriers you're looking at brick walls um, you're looking at camera systems we've got a camera system in my car park where the if anybody comes on the car park that shouldn't be on there it should trigger a sensor and it goes directly through to a main office where it li lights up on their tv screen and then they just get back in touch with them on a microphone system and say hey what are you doing in here you can't be in here you have to leave mate or the police will be called and they leave you know so that we got that system set up there it's i don't pay for it it's actually the office who owns the the office in front of my car park pays for it and it covers the whole car park he put it in i don't know why but he did so that's good doesn't cost me anything to maintain that um you need to work out you are you going to rent out by the hour are you going to put pay and display meters in are you going to team up with a company like nc ncp car parks or something npc is it ncp ncp car parks and they take 40 percent. you get 60 percent of the money um are you going to rent it out monthly to, to office building workers or hospital staff or airport staff are you going to run a bus service and have an airport car park in a field outside the airport where you park outside the airport where you park people up for a month two weeks they can long stay there and you pick them up on a coach take them back on a, on a minibus or whatever you could do that there's so many options um so there you go that's the car park business wonder if i've missed anything i've got a little list one second let me check it 
Uh, leverage, that's the only other thing, is leverage. You can obviously get a loan, you can get mortgages against this sort of, sort of stuff, commercial loans, but you might have to pay like 6% um, or a 40% 40, 40 deposit. So there you go. Um, make sure that the mortgage rates, the yield and everything else is all good. Otherwise, um, there'll be problems that you'll have coming on in the long term and you need, don't need that you need to make sure there's plenty of money in the deal left after the mortgage after the insurance after the maintenance man after any any costs and stuff like that so there you go this nice little area here that i've checked out to, to do my car park video so there you go thanks for watching give us a like give us a sub check me other videos and i'll see you in the next one